Lawrence Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com. Thanks for stopping by today. I have a really sweet little treat holder and it's this. I think it looks like a very kind of tall townhouse and it was made to fit one of these Raffaello sleeves. Now I found this in um, Walmart just like this and inside of it contained two sleeves of four Raffaellos each. And this was made for this to fit right down in there. Of course you could fit other things in there as well. And I think it's pretty sweet. Essentially, it's a tall milk carton. And the compartment part of it is, let's see, six and a half inches tall by one and a half inches across and one and one quarter inch deep. And I just really decorated the front. You can decorate as much as you want. And I put some holes, punched some holes, and put some ribbon on the top. You could dangle um, some jingle bells, or you could dangle a tag, or anything you want onto it. But I think it makes a very sweet presentation. In fact, I thought it'd make a very sweet one for Christmas, too, so I came up with this version of it, which is my gingerbread house version of it. Again, I didn't decorate the back, but I did have some epoxy sticker uh, candy canes I put on the sides, and went ahead and decorated it very similarly to my first one. And I think this would be very sweet with some jingle bells and a tag hanging from the front of it. But today I'm going to make this one because there are so many different ways to decorate gingerbread houses with whatever you have on hand. So I'm going to make my um, more townhouse version of it. And we'll go ahead and start with the box. For the box we started with a piece of cardstock that was 11 inches long by 6 inches wide. So let me show you how I scored this. All right, so essentially we are making a tall milk carton. So it's very similar to what you see with the milk cartons. We're going to start with the six inch side up and we'll first start score at one half of an inch, one and three quarters of an inch, three and one quarter of an inch, and four and a half inches. All right, go ahead and turn to the side. And if you're using a pattern paper or a pattern cardstock with a directional print, you want that direction going to the right. All right, so now score this at one and a quarter inches, seven and a half inches. And we're gonna just flip this over for the top part of the milk carton and score it at 10 and a half inches. All right, so go ahead and flip that back over this way. And again, this is the top of the milk carton, so we're going to turn that back over here with that half an inch score line on the top. And then we're going to score it just down to that score line at one and one eighth of an inch, just down to that score line, and three and seven eighths of an inch, just down to that score line. And that's going to help us um, do some hand scores now to make that triangle top of our milk carton. All right, so let me put that down. Keep your scoring tool and go ahead and get a ruler. And as you can see, if you can see, hopefully that this is that partial score line right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna score right from where that meets that half inch score line down to this corner and down to this corner in that same rectangle. So from that center to both bottom corners to make a triangle. And we'll do that with the other one as well. All right, so now can you see that? There's the two triangles, and those are the sides of the top of the milk carton box. That's what we'll fold it into a triangle. We'll go ahead and fold and burnish them now. And then we'll go ahead and fold these cross score lines to the one on the bottom, the one that's the shoulder of the box, and then we'll fold the top one the opposite direction. And that just makes the top fold of the box. All right, so let me turn it this way for a minute. You have a half an inch score line that runs along the side uh, on the bottom you have that one tiny little rectangle which is going to go 
and then just slightly notch up all the rest of these on the bottom. All right, so this half an inch score line down the side is our glue tab. So just go ahead and put some strong adhesive down there. Now, normally I'd run a second one down there to cover the whole tab, but for getting the video going fast, I will just put one on for now. All right, go ahead and fold that over and meet the other side to it. Okay, so we have our box. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the bottom now, and I, my seam is back there, so I'll go ahead and put my two sides down, put my front down, and let me go ahead and do this. All right, and now we can just go ahead and pinch our top in. On both sides and that will fold right along our score lines and that makes our little I guess townhouse is what I'm calling it perhaps a little brownstone all right so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole and I'm just gonna go ahead and quite make a little mark on both sides so I know where I want to punch just to make it even and I'll take a 1 8 inch hole punch and I'm going to line mine up and I'm going to punch these all at one time and it's going through quite a few layers because I'm going right through the center of where all those fold. And as you can see that takes an awful lot of strength to get through and if you can't do that that's okay just go ahead and fold that front part open so you only have two layers and pinch it that way and then go ahead and fold it back and line the punch back up in there and punch through your other two layers. Okay, so we got that done. All right, so let me go ahead and decorate this. And how I decorated these was I used a one inch strip of paper that I had left over from my other projects. And it was one inch by six inches long. But what I did was I cut a two inch section for my door and then I cut a three quarters and three quarters and three quarters sections for my window. So these are one inch by three quarters of an inch. And this is one inch by two inches. All right, so for my door, what I did to get round the top on this one is I actually fed it into a one and one quarter inch punch. I lined it parallel up to the sides and I just punched it and it gave me a nice rounded top. And then what I did is I just took a Sharpie marker or a black pen and I just drew lines around it and then a cross section in there. And I took a marker and just made what looked like curtains inside the windows. And then I glued one, I glued one of my windows on. So you can see it's a patterned paper strip that I did. I glued one of my windows on the front door. And then what I did is I actually just drew some hinges. And a doorknob. And you can use enamel dots or anything else you have for this as well. I just thought it was so easy just to go ahead and draw it on there. But before I put my door on, I actually put kind of what looked like some bushes or grass around there. And what I did is I took another one inch strip from another project I have, which kind of had a green glitter design on it. And I just pinched it around the box. And I just made the end right here where my door was going to go. And then I just glued that in place. And I took my door and I put it up on some foam tape. And put it where it should be. And I wanted it a little bit to the right so it didn't look like it was exactly in the center. And then I just glued my two windows in place. 
Okay, so how I finished off the awning on my window is I just took a, a scalloped square punch and I used the one I have is one and a quarter inch and this is an EK Success punch. And I just took whatever I wanted from my awning and cut it. Uh, you could just punch out one and cut it in half, but I just had a one inch strip, so that's what I used. And I just went up to the second scallop. So that's where I lined up the side of my paper to the second scallop. And I needed two of them. And then what I did is I just I liked the three scallops in the middle. So what I did was just went a little bit wider from my scallops and I just cut an angle into as wide as my window was. So right there, so right here and here, I kind of ended it on the top, but I made it a little bit wider on the bottom so it would cover the whole top of the window. See about halfway through this scallop and I aimed it right up for that one spot and both ends. And then I just put a little strip of foam tape on the back of both of them to pop it up over top of the window. And I thought they looked like very sweet little windows. Now to finish off the windows, all I did was took a little bluebird. And this comes from the um, Stampin' Up! Uh, Tree Builder Punch. Uh, it went with the Sprinkles of Life stamp set and it has this adorable little bird. Let me just go ahead and put those on with a glue dot. And I want to put them facing each other because they're having a conversation. Alright, so for my roof shingles on this one I just used a scallop punch, border punch, and I just took a two inch piece first because my first two pieces were two inch and the last one on top was a one inch strip because I stopped it where the um, fold for the milk carton was and I just went ahead and punched a scallop edge Save that for my next one. And then I just ran some tape across it. But I left the scallop edge open because I wanted to um, fold the edges up a bit and make it look like the edges were curling up. And I just put ahead, went ahead and put it on my roof and the first set of scallops I put right over my um, shoulders of the box that score seven and a half inch score line and just lined it up the way I wanted it to okay then I turned it over and I just cut this side off okay so I moved it up and I tried to make it parallel and I offset my scallops a little and again I cut the one side off here Okay, so I have some left over, so what I'm going to do is just cut that down to one inch. So I cut that down to one inch and I'll put that right up snugged to my um, score line where the box is. Alright, so I turn that over and I'll just trim up all my edges now. And then I'm going to go ahead and curl up my edges. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and use some ribbon. This happens to be 1 8 inch old olive. But let me go ahead and put my Raffaello in there. Alright, and 
let's just go ahead and close that up and I'll put this on while I thread them through and tie it. And there's my little townhouse treat holder. And let me bring in my gingerbread version as well. I think they turned out very sweet and it's a very whimsical look to give a Raffaello sleeve of four Raffaellos with. Of course you can put them in there individually as well. And it would make a really nice um, stocking stuffer as well. So I hope you enjoyed this project today, my townhouse treat holder. And if you like the video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. If you need any more information on this project or any other projects I've done, please go to rejoiceandcreate.com. And as always, until we meet again, I hope your days are blessed. Bye!